With so many low-cost subscription-based streaming services now available like Netflix, Binge, Stan, Disney+, Plus, KO, and Amazon Prime, it begs the question, is there any money or even demand for selling new and used DVDs online? Well, I'm here today to tell you that there is. <laughs> Over the past year as a full-time reseller, I've focused my time and attention into four main selling categories, shoes, clothes, books, and DVDs. And over this time, I've realized DVDs are one of the most accessible and cheap products to source and one of, if not the easiest items to list, sell, and ship. So in today's video, I'm gonna take you through my five-step process to generating fast online DVD sales, guaranteed to make you profit every time. The first step in the process is sourcing your DVDs and there are a few different areas that you can go to to get them. The first one is garage sales. You can buy DVDs at garage sales anywhere between 50 cents to a dollar and you'll often have a few to pick from. The second one is thrift stores. You will pay a little bit more in the thrift anywhere between one to three dollars. So I actually don't recommend that you source your DVDs from the thrift stores. When you're doing this process, you wanna be using Facebook Marketplace. You wanna be making sure that you're getting DVD bundles of 250 DVDs or more, really large volume. And you wanna be making sure that you purchase price is anywhere between 50 cents to 75 cents per DVD. A really, really crucial step. A few other things as well. There's a few genres that go on to sell really well. In my experience, the horror category and the action category, as well as TV shows have gone on to sell really well for me. And then the other two items that you need to be considering is brand new is always going to make you a few more dollars. So if you can find bundles that have brand new DVDs, you'll generally go on to do okay. And then the other one is scratches on the DVD. You want to make sure before you purchase, you at least check over a number of the DVDs to make sure there aren't any on there. The second step in the process is sourcing your DVD. So you've got the purchase of Facebook Marketplace, you brought it back home. Now you need to sift through every single DVD and work out which ones sell on eBay for $10 or more, that's the key figure, 10 bucks. If you buy them for 50 cents each, your profit on a $10 sale with track postage at $4.50 is gonna be a $3.50 profit, which sounds like a small figure, but that is the baseline that I personally start with. So I'm looking for DVDs using the sold comp search on eBay, and I'm scanning every single DVD in my bundle. There might be 250 DVDs that you've got to scan, but it is a very worthwhile process. So like I said, I'm looking for anything that's $10 or more, and that's gonna be the first step, creating two piles, one will be a Facebook Marketplace wholesale purchase that you'll do for any DVDs that comp under $10. And then you'll create a second pile for eBay and that will show DVDs that are worth $10 or more. So you can expect when you do this sorting process to get about a 33% return. So say for instance, you had 200 DVDs, I would say about 66 of those DVDs on average will be over $10 when it comes to checking them on eBay. So really crucial step there guys, make sure you spend the time to sort through your items and don't list anything that isn't worth very much on eBay. All right, so you've sorted through all your DVDs. Now it's time to go and list them up onto eBay. Now I do all my listings just off my phone and the first thing that we're gonna have a look at are the photos. Now I'll always take four photos of the DVD. The one is the front and the back. They're the first two photos. There's some really important information on the back of the case. So you need to be making sure you're taking a photo of that. And then the second one as well, the front cover is very important because it often shows any out of print copies. So the design of the DVD case itself can often be very important and often unknown if you're an inexperienced reseller. So there are some really good reasons to take photos of the front and the back cover. The next as well is the front and the back of the CD itself. If there are any scratches on the back of the DVD, you wanna be putting that into the description as well. The next thing we look at is the title. Now the title, when it comes to that, you wanna be putting in the title of the DVD itself, pretty self explanatory. You also want wanting to put in the year and the genre as well. So the year of the DVD that was made, you can often find that on the back of the DVD and the genre. So whether it be action or horror, then you want to go and put in the region code. Now the region code is going to be basically telling you where the DVD can be played on what form of DVD player. If it's a region four, it can be played in Australia. If it's a region one, it can be played in the US or Canada. So there's a lot of different region codes. You'll often find it on the back of the DVD. Make sure you put that into the title. It's very, very important. Then you also wanna write the condition. Now I'll often write very good condition or VGC, and then I'll say free postage as well. Item specifics, there's often a process of going through the item specifics that you need to be doing, and there are a few recommended item specifics that need to be added in. However, then there are a few other recommended. And when it comes to the recommended, I'll often add in pretty much most, as you can see here, pretty much all of them are, are simply added in. It doesn't take very long to do. The process is a very quick one, but it is very important when it comes to search to make sure that you've got those item specifics in there. The next one is the price, reflecting back to when you did your previously sold search uh, to work out whether or not the item was worth selling. That is when you'll put in that specific price point. So it's very important that you get the right price 
to make sure it does go on to sell. Um, the next thing I like to do is international postage. I do a flat rate of $20 when it comes to international. And then I'll always promote my listings as well at 2% for every single one of my listings. Um, just stands a better chance for it to sell. Now, that process takes me literally about 30 seconds to do, and I'm often able to get about 20 DVDs listed in a one hour time period. So it's a very, very quick process, and it does not take long to do, which is one of the best things about listing DVDs on eBay. Postage is very simple, guys. I just use this Australia Post tracked envelope. This cost me $4.50. I buy it in bulk. It cost me $45 to get 10 of these, and I just I just generally buy about 100 of them at a time. So I'm always throwing them into this. It never gets damaged. There's no issues with it getting damaged. I've just not had one concern with that after selling hundreds of them, and I am always taking into account a $4.50 postage charge. Now, there is a tracking number on these, which is the reason why I do pay a little bit more money. If the item does go missing, you do have a really good track record of where that item is is by having that tracking number. I have seen resellers in the past do the $2.80 non-posted uh, large prepaid envelope, and you can do that as well, but I just like the assurance of having a tracking number there, and I'm just whacking it into that and sending it out. So a very, very easy process to ship your items. No bubble wrap, no nothing. Just put it in the envelope and get it out the door. So you've probably sold 33% of your DVDs at $10 or more on eBay. You've still got 66%. You've still got two thirds of those DVDs still at home. Now, the best way to get rid of them is just to whack them back onto Facebook Marketplace as another wholesale deal. Now, I'll always often undercut what I even paid for them initially just because I wanna get rid of them. So if I buy them for 75 cents, I'll list the, whatever was remaining, a good 66% of those DVDs back up for 50 cents each just to clear them and get some money back. You're gonna make most of your profit off the individual sales on eBay. So anything that you recoup back from your resale lot of the ones that you don't want is just a big win. So it's often a really low rate, you know, 40, even 40 cents to 50 cents, something like that. As long as they sell, as long as you can clear that excess stock out, uh, you'll go a long way to, I guess, topping up that overall profit. Um, but that's everything, guys. Hopefully all of that information, those five steps can get you to selling a heap of DVDs and making a heap of money. I've done it for the last year and I have made a few dollars from it. So fingers crossed you can too. Let me know in the comments if you've sold DVDs or if you want to start selling DVDs now that you've seen this video. I answer all my comments, so let me know in the comments below if you have any questions. I do appreciate you tuning in, guys. Keep charging. We'll see you in the next one.